Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to the Drop Dad podcast. Uh, my name is Kevin. My other host and uh, boyfriend is uh, Troy. Just boyfriend? Uh, well, I thought I was a little more serious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you got to take that ring off that is for your wife and you put on the oh. ring. I got you. No. Well, so uh, <laughs> the, this week's guest is uh, John Peterson. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, he just did it. Uh, John is my brother. Uh, uh, yeah, he is um, related to me. Yeah, we're um, we're related by blood. We both have the same father, apparently. Oh yeah, that's allegedly. How relationships work. You know, I should call my dad and get a get a couple of good dad jokes. He's got like six in the chamber every time I see him, and then uh, th- those are like his main six that he's had for twenty years. And I got to get those and then bring them to the show. So With can... as many siblings as you guys have, he, he had more than six in the chamber. I'm just saying, that's, those are the only ones. They're like the one about. Thank you for the yeah. laugh. I appreciate it. Oh. Well, he doesn't actually have six kids. There were six kids in the family, but there is not six. He's only, he's only yeah. had three. He only has three kids. Allegedly. He's got three. Allegedly. In the, he had three in the chamber. <laughs> yeah, at least three. He was half cocked. Um, <laughs> no, my, I, I skipped right over that and I was just like, no. <laughs> Yeah, my, my dad would tell us all the all the inappropriate dad jokes, but those the best. I, I can't replay, repeat those. But he 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 said that the the popular ones when he was a kid was like like uh, mommy, why is it so hot in here? Shut up, get back in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> mommy, mommy, why am I running in circles? Shut up, or I'll nail your other foot to the floor. <laughs> you know, just child abuse. Yeah, just it, it, hilarious <laughs> of child abuse. <laughs> Uh, should we uh, hop right into the beer of the week? Yeah, I, I'm parched. I am too. All right. Uh, John, this is courtesy of you. We weren't expecting yeah. it. Nobody's brought us beer yet. Well, I to be honest, I mean, I brought it because I wasn't sure what the protocol was. Um, and tonight, I decide, or today I decided on Voodoo Ranger. Uh, it's Fruit Force Fruit Punch IPA. Fruit Force. Yeah. Um, it is 9 per, 9.5 ABV. And uh, yeah, right on. I, I I I honestly couldn't pick at the gas station. It was. Um, I literally almost grabbed the same beer for the show today. Oh right, we were t- Kevin and I were talking about it before you ca- got here. God, mm-hmm. I haven't had an IPA in forever in a while. Here, well, that is delicious. Smelling. Fruit force. It, it smells. Smells. Delicious. smells it smells. You can smell the fruit punch in it. Oh yeah, you can. Ooh, that's good. You can get that fruit punch too. Yep. Wow, nine percent. That is. Nine point five. Punch. Wow. That's why I said I think this is gonna that be is good. dangerous. That is really good. Like so. you said, not a chugging beer though. No, IPAs are never chugging beers. If any, if you ever have <laughs> no. a drinking competition, you know. You, stick you ever it. have an IPA hangover? Oh, oh my god. Mm. All yeah. you taste is like hops, hops and fruit. Yep. And like yep. it's on the back of your tongue. Like, don't just only drink IPAs one night. It'll no. hurt you a lot. You regret every decision you made that night. You know, I was actually telling them last week was the um i brought doppelbach and i told him the story about how well, at one time you drank 12 doppelbachs and you couldn't get up off the couch yep yeah i remember that we were watching um a, we're, we're, we were watching a movie wasn't it like um human centipede 2 or something like oh, that or classic maybe. piece of film maybe. right <laughs> yeah. right and uh yeah that's all i could do because the rest that movie was just like a train wreck so. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to tell stories about you last week it's actually oh. we, one of the reasons we wanted you to come on, uh, one of your best qualities I find is your best qualities is I can't tell when you're drunk. Th- there's oh. two levels of John. There's, and and I think I used this <laughs> analogy on the last show, like 2 p.m. in the afternoon, John, mm-hmm. where you're perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden there's 2 a.m. John yeah. where you're way too far gone. There's like no in between. Yeah, well... Well, there's there is an in between. It's all just in here. <laughs> it's like I am I- internally, I'm I am wasted, but on the outside, stone cold. Until I go to walk down the stairs, and then that's when I hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, like when we have, uh, like if we're camping or go doing like donkey day, donkey stuff, day. Yeah, uh, I'll just be like, hey, John, uh, we're gonna go get some snacks. He's like, cool, I'll be there, and I'll start walking, and then I'll look back, and I'm like, what happened to John? And I'm like. He's dying back there. He yeah. fell and he rolled down a hill. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, no, that 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 happens. My old house was not conducive for Donkey Day. No, oh, uh, I, I will I will plug camping though. I'm camping is important. And uh, Troy, you're going to go with us this year. 
I, so we've talked. We've trying talked trying about this. I'm, I'm not going. It was a one and done, man. No, no, you have to. What if we get enough the, people uh, from the show thing? Troy, go camping. Yeah, if, I I will log in and I will I will make like 40 accounts and I'll be like Troy has to go camping on each one of them. Troy camping one. Troy yeah. camping no, two. <laughs> no, you won't. Okay, mm-hmm. if this video gets. A thousand likes. A thousand likes. Good a God. thousand likes. Oh, right. and we'll put we'll put it on TikTok. I'll give it a fair shot. TikTok, it's, uh, YouTube it's, Shorts. Ca- and camping is in June, so we have a little bit of time. It's okay that you're scared. Scared of what? Scared of of the inner Troy. And that one time that I brought Fernet Bronca, camping. and and he <laughs> he was Fuck so mad. That bottle. He was so mad when I brought Fernet Bronca. Uh, who wasn't mad? Trent shot the fucking thing. It still I, had I, it still had liquid in it. We it were gonna, had we, so much. Left. We were going to pass it. I out had as that bottle for a year or something like that. And it yeah. never we talked went you down. into shooting it because no. it was that bad. Here, and I got to get another one really quick. Let me let me just kind of can I go over like why camping and what camping? Oh, do sure. It. Do so it. every year, Absolutely. every year as a group, we get uh, we get a cabin out in the woods, and it's um, a federal cabin, four to six dudes in the woods, ages you know what. 25 to you know however old i am yeah jake was the youngest wasn't he he was how old is jake i don't know he's in his 20s though he's got late um, 20s, I think. whippersnapper yeah yeah whippersnappers and you're all whippersnappers the whippersnappers and their good knees no <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah, my, my knee just cracked i couldn't hear it but it, <laughs> I know, it's I heard that. yeah i heard that um <clears throat> so so we do this, uh, we do this, and we get together every year, and it's just our our way to get away from this thing. These, you know, everything. We go out of cell service, and then we just we have conversations for the entire weekend. We play games, play a ton and, of games. We play tons of games. It's it's exhausting, but it's the best weekend. To, um, it's the best weekend to have with the guys. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. And Troy's too scared to go. So he's, he, he he went he went last year because I convinced his wife to let him or not to let him. I convinced his wife to make him make go. him make him go. Uh, and 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 I don't know why, but she won't do it this year. So I have a not cool. re- really quick. I do have a white van. Um, <laughs> so me and you, we Is that just free black candy bag or free puppies on the side. No, Might no. be a good way to get me we in. Just, we just pull up to you while you're walking along on a Friday. And we just throw you in the van, and we force you to go. Yeah, we're it's like, just like an old school. Yeah, we're like, school that <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. have him back by Sunday. He'll be fine. You tell me about this, I'll fucking kill you. I'm kidding. We'll have him back by Sunday. <laughs> with your pantyhose, with the other <laughs> yeah. leg just hanging off. <laughs> oh. That's so good. Here, here's my deal about camping, okay? I'll, I'll give you my perspective of camping. So okay. why she won't make me do it again is because we agreed last year that I would go one time, and then I would never have to hear about it again. Do you remember that? No. Jess, no. I don't remember. I don't remember any of this, so it didn't happen. That's it. I, I don't. Were you there? Because we were still playing D anD D when. Well, we, when I'm I, sorry if I wasn't there. I wasn't part of the original deal, was I? Well, I didn't cut the deal with you. you. I cut it with a, Kevin. Now we never signed. Me. We never hey, had it notarized. You owe Ke- you owed Kevin. You paid your debt to Kevin. Now you owe me. <laughs> you have to pay your debt shit. to me. <laughs> then you have. Then you're gonna owe Trent, and you have to pay your debt to him. I mean, you just owe everybody. I don't owe Trent jack shit. You owe it. You owe it to you, everybody and yourself. Okay. What? What was the deal? The deal was between you and me that I would not pressure you to go. Shut the fuck up, woman. You went one year. Don't tell him. Don't tell him the deal. Between you. I and swear to God, it was between me and Kevin. Ooh. So, question. Okay. What is wrong with with hanging out with us dudes? Is it because we don't we we're we're not beautiful and you can't have you can have sex with us? No, he's. he's I like having sex with you guys. Oh. That's why he's afraid because he's afraid he's going to have to cash in on that bet. No, mm. or here, when here, he has to cash in on that bet. Mm. Here is the deal about camping. When I was younger, it, it was like what my family did. Right, we'd go out camping every every weekend during the summer, and my dad is an avid hunter. And like when he camps, it's like we're cavemen. <laughs> So we would go hunting in, okay. in Montana when it's negative 45 out in a tent with a, a heater and, you know, guys with ass full of beans. Right. As it should be. Yeah. And it, it was, I just got tired of it. It's like the same reason I don't eat peanut butter and jelly sandwich anymore because but, that's uh, what I eat all through school. That's, that's fair. I see. I see your point. Um, but to be fair, though. 
It's to it's, be fair. It's just <laughs> once a year. It's just once a year, and it's it's just the guys. And so. it's in a nice cabin. This it's this, in a nice cabin. this particular cabin is uh, it's more like a little house. But we went there. Is just it on a prairie. Yeah. It is actually. It they're rolling hills all around. It's an incredible place. Is um, Laura Ingalls Wild there. Um. It's it's it it is like a little house, and there's um, you Wait. know like all the amenities that a cabin has, but the inside just feels like you're camping or you're at like an Airbnb. That's what it felt like to me. I was like, this place is different from every other cabin I've been to. Cause usually there's like a log inside, you know, there's no logs or whatever. It's just, it's like being in here. Like sheet rocked. Did um, you ask if Michael Landon Landon was there because little house on the prairie Laura Ingalls Wilder. Oh, I think Michael Landon was. There too. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> recreation.gov is the website. <laughs> Um, and you can go, you can get, um, it's a, it's a government website. You go and you can reserve a cabin for a weekend. You got to get in early. Um, so see John and I, when we were younger, a lot of times we, when we went camping, it was because we didn't have anywhere else to go. Yeah. It was a bit more sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I honestly would hate camping in a tent and hate camping in a car, hate camping. Yeah. I tent. enjoy the, the cabin part of it just because it's like, you got a bed, you know, it's comfortable. Mm-hmm. And then you get to go outside and you get to be as loud and, and ridiculous as you want. Like just howling and yelling and dancing yeah. around the fire is incredibly fun. Yeah, get uh, without 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 worrying about like uh people rolling up or wearing like, shirt pants. Like police police being like, Why are you being so well, loud? There was that time we that there was that time we went camping where that guy it, died? That guy died, but that's a true story. That was the time we, we ate a bunch of edibles and then uh all those teenagers were pulling up and there was just me. I'm I'm six foot something, six foot two, um, dude just sitting there poking a fire and, and then when these teenagers come up, I'd pull it out and I just watch them because I it wasn't it wasn't like John, it wasn't John, like I was trying to be intimidating. I was like why is that person here? Let's let's, re- let's rewind here a little bit. So we went camping at a really close spot to Helena. Oh. It's more of a story. I apologize. We decided that we're never going to go camping there again because that place is kind of cursed. It's bad vibes. So a fire rolled through that area like 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Really, I think it was like the famous fire, the really famous fire that happened in like 2001 or two or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of it is just burnt up stumps everywhere, you know, everywhere you look. But it was like kind of cool. It's just like between the hills and stuff in like this little valley. And uh, so we get there, we're doing our thing and hanging out. And uh, at some point, our friend Jared, who's going to be on the show at some point, says like, oh, I got to work. I got to go. And so he goes to drive off. And all of a sudden he rolls back up. We're like, oh, Jared must have forgot something. He's like, there's a fucking dead guy down in the in the in the ravine down there. Mm -hmm. And so Trent hops in the car with him and they drive down there. And yeah, a guy like flown off into the ravine and he died. And uh, so they were like, well, the cops are already on their way. Somebody else already like found him and stuff. And then Trent comes back and he's like, you know, I'm really fucking bummed. Maybe I'll just leave too. And we were like, oh, that fucking sucks. Guy dies and now everybody's bummed. Um, And uh, so we were like, so Jared, before he left, was like, guys, I'm leaving these edibles for you guys. You guys (laughs) can hang out and eat them or whatever. And we're like, okay. So he brought four. And so we were like, why don't we take one each and then we'll split the last one three ways. Yeah. And so we did that. And what ungodly amount of yeah. of so weed was in that? Logic tells you that that like weed wasn't legal or it, it was legal, but we hadn't smoked it, right? We haven't I haven't smoked in years. Many, many At that years. point, yeah. At that point. So I'm pretty sure that they were each like twenty five. Right. Oh wow. Twenty fives, and then we I didn't. Know. And then we took a third. I didn't know. We what? asked later on, and we we're like, and so yeah, we eat these, and we're just like laying there, and um, well, like I got this weird burst of energy. I was like, I had a soccer ball, and I was mm-hmm. kicking it all over the place, and I was running, mm-hmm. and uh, and then eventually I was like, we should go inside and play a game. We sit down, we start playing a game, and then at one point I was like, guys, I need to go lay down. And Trent was like, me too. I got to go lay down. It's like 530. Mm-hmm. It's still <laughs> bright light. out, really bright. We go and lay down and all three of us are laying down and we're staring at the ceiling. And I was like, every movement I made, I had to think about. I was like, mm-hmm. 
okay. Uh, <laughs> when you had to look over, think about breathing. Yeah, where you're, yeah. and, I, and I, I kept going like I kept looking over at John and Trent because they were to my right, and I was like, I wonder if they're gonna notice that I am looking at them. And I do like a quick look, and then I go back. <laughs> and then uh, at some point, it's got really quiet. You know how when it gets really quiet, you can hear your like you can like hear your blood moving. You know, where it's like yeah. Rrr, rrr, rrr. So I'm sitting there like just staring. And then all of a sudden, John comes in, and I always bring this up because it's really funny. There was a skylight in the cabin, right? They had mm-hmm. built this skylight. And he goes, how did they get that up there? <laughs> no. What I said was, guys, I don't think these edibles are working at all. And then a couple minutes later, I go, how do you think they got that skylight <laughs> in there? They had to cut a hole in those trees in, so, the, in, the, in the logs to get it in there. That is amazing. They had to put these little. They had to put the logs up there. How'd they get them up there? <laughs> yeah, and I and I was going over in my head like all the steps it takes to make a cabin, because you know you've seen those videos on the internet of some dude in the woods making a cabin with just an axe. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's what it was like, and uh, you know. And I just had this weird moment where, and then and then after that, I was like, I got to get up and go do something else because. This is just this laying here and imagining I'm a cabineer. I mean, this is weird. <laughs> and so I'm like, I had to like, I, I lifted up my leg and I'm like, all right, leg, let's do it. <laughs> and I threw it, threw my leg over and I get up. And then that's when I went outside. And that's when all those teenagers were pulling up because it was like Saturday night. And all of them were like trying to find some place. Teenagers trying to find yeah. a place to get wasted at. Yeah. Fi- <laughs> trying to find them. a place to get wasted. And, and, and see this guy out there like, Poker yeah. fire with a stick. Like, did, did you guys see that guy back there? Yeah. He's going to come fucking murder us. I'm pretty sure he had a murder stick. <laughs> so, uh, I, I remember fire. being those I teenagers have... and rolling up and be like, we got to get out of here, man. Yeah, fuck yeah. that guy. That There's guy's going to fucking dude. kill us. You know? yeah. Yeah. I have pictures. Of, I have a lot of pictures on my phone. Weird number of pictures of the end of a burning stick. <laughs> and, yeah. and I was doing this. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, it was, it, was, it was a good time. So though. good. It was a good time, though. Yeah, but... Now, like, what, two years later? Yeah, no, 25 yeah. milligrams ain't doing shit to me anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my tolerance is a, a little bit higher than I know. I went and today. watched Cocaine Bear, and I, my wife and I were just popping edibles the whole time. We were like, whoa, cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet cocaine's yeah, fun. You know? Uh, uh, it's fun. No, that was a good movie, though. I like that. I like, I like, I like bad movies. I like, I like watch it. Easy. Um, easy, you. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, the microphone tried to attack me. Anybody was just listening. We gave the mi- microphone cocaine before you got here. Right. It's, it's on me. <laughs> um, fuck, what was, what was I saying? I forgot. Bad anyway. movies. Anyway, bad, I, I bad love movies. bad movies, and it's like the rise of the bad movies. And uh, the Cocaine Bear had like Margot Martindale, um, uh, Jesse F- Tyler Ferguson, mm. um, Ray Liotta. I think it was his last movie. Yeah, yeah. which is like. Yeah. Really funny because it, it's, it's for that to be your last movie. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I, I like, like, I, I've, I've heard people say I've seen bad movies more than I've seen Oscar winning movies. Like, I've seen The Room more than I've seen, you know, what Schindler's List. The I, I've never seen Schindler's um, List. I've never seen Schindler's I watched List. I in high school, actually. <laughs> so. I mean, like Oscar movies are made with the purpose of winning the award, though. Like most right, of the ones yeah. that are nominated, their whole purpose is to get nominated. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the general public isn't going to find most of that appealing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, bad movies. Oscar season. We just had the Oscars recently. Yeah, right? and Brendan Fraser yeah. won an Oscar for The yeah. Whale. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen. I'm just either. really happy about that guy's comeback. He just seems so did you, wholesome. Did you see yeah. um, Everything Everywhere All at Once? I have not. No. It's good. It's Is really that good? Yeah, yeah, that one uh, a bunch too. Uh-uh. And the Ki Hui Kwan, Hui Kwan, he was the guy um, in that. He he was short round in in uh, yeah, Indiana Jones. You know? Oh okay. Yeah, he right. he's doing mm-hmm. this big comeback too with like Brendan Fraser. Fraser. No, is it, is it Fraser or Fa- Fraser? Fraser. 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 Yeah. Fraser. Yeah. Fraser. Yeah. Well, they're they're doing their own thing. They're not doing it together. They're no, no, no. Yeah, I know. This, you know. Yeah, they're like good friends. You always see videos yeah. of them like hanging out and stuff. So oh, kind of cool. Um, actually, if you haven't watched it, Doom Patrol on HBO Max. Um, it's like a DC comic like movie, and uh, that has Brendan Fraser in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he plays. He you know he plays like a. I can't remember his name. It's been a minute since I've watched the show, but but that was a good one too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my my favorite Brendan Fraser Fraser Fraser. Yeah, I loved Bedazzled. 
Oh yeah, oh, that yeah. was a good one too. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it was because Elizabeth Hurley and she was fucking smoking hot in that in that movie. She still is. That's fair. Know, it's it's, it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fair for her. Yeah, it's fair. There, for there's so like many yeah. fucking day. memorable moments in that movie that I I will never forget. like the guy on the beach drawing, uh-huh. you know, and he's just and like, crying at the sunset. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like what's that damn yeah. thing gonna set? Uh, that's, that's what I say whenever I'm driving into the sun. I'll go, when is that damn thing going to stand? Yeah, I know. I, I do that down. too. <laughs> when he rips his mustache off. Yeah. He's cocaine. Yeah, it's it's cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, the basketball guy with the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. the little dick. He's like seven foot tall and he just has a tiny. Basically, we went out there. We, oh, <laughs> yeah. You go yep. out there, you try to play good. You want to play good. Uh, give I think we played pretty good today. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sweating like pouring sweat. profusely yeah god that movie's so good i want to watch that again uh, that's a really good one I have, I have a couple of those like from back in the day that like weren't made to be good movies but mm-hmm. i like basketball is one of them uh new guy oh yeah the yeah. new guy with dj qualls yeah dj qualls did, did you ever see um brendan fraser was in another movie with um chris Catan. Called Monkey Bone. Did you ever see that movie? I did not. Oh, the movie's fucking nuts. What's the movie that he's in with Adam Sandler and um, oh, oh god, um, it, were there like Chris Kattan or no, no Fraser. Brendan Fraser? It's one of their Airheads. Old, yeah, Airheads. That's it. Oh, they take over a radio station. Yeah, Airheads. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And then Encino Man. I have not seen Encino Man Encino either. Man. That's yeah, another one. The Mummy I, trilogy. I, everybody's seen the yeah, Mummy. Mummy's yeah, so good. I'm not a big cinephile like you guys, though. You guys tell me movies. I'm like, I've never yeah. seen that. I know. I tried, to, I tried to get you to watch Seven Days in Hell once. was a 30-minute mockumentary about tennis, and you were like... Dude, we were fucking, fucking hammered. Yeah, probably. Well, that's the best time to watch those kinds of movies. Not, we, I, okay. I was over that edge. If you want, if you want a list of... Um, sorry, I got a hair. <laughs> if you guys want a list of, like, of good, bad movies to watch, um, yeah, just talk to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we watched... Oh, wait. Uh, Hell Comes to Frogtown with Rowdy, Rowdy, Rowdy Roddy Piper made back in the 80s. So basically the story is every male is now um, sterile. And he's or, uh, most of them are, but he is very fertile. Mm. And uh, all, and you know, women have trouble, you know. It's all hot this rod thing. is fertile. Yeah, so, and but uh, but everybody else has turned into frogs. And so that's why, you know. Actually, the, the masks in that movie were actually pretty good. Um, and then uh, every once in a while we watch The Room with Tommy oh, Wiseau. Yeah. Uh, and then of course, there's always our yeah our big one is always uh, Zombie Ass Toilet of the Dead. I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, I, Zombie Ass Toilet of the Dead. It's a uh, it's a it's a what Japanese Japanese zombie movie zombie. with parasites that come mm-hmm. out of your butt. Butt parasites. Butt parasites. That's the kind of parasites. And at one point, there's a uh, the parasite. the 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 two people have parasites coming out of their asses, and they're yep. sword fighting with them in the air, yep. propelled by their own farts. Right. Yes. This. Is- yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it so you can see like this, but it this is. like yellowish green gas coming out, and they're sword fighting with it mm-hmm. and flying around. So like, it is an incredible what, film. What was that mm-hmm. movie from back in the early two thousands? Crouching Tiger ish. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, same level of art style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, is on, it is right there yeah. with with that peak kind of cinema that you would expect. Okay. Yeah. You know, right. with, with, with parasites out of their butts. Yeah. But at, one, at one point, there's like, there's a guy we call reaction guy because he's always like overreacting. And uh, at one point, he goes to uh, hit like one of the zombies with a bat. And the zombie flips over, it turns over and like sticks its butt up in the air. And the parasite comes out and starts like doing this sawing motion where it's like, yeah, it, and he goes to hit it with the bat and that it eats the bat. And he goes, that butt ate my bat. <laughs> so good. It makes the sound of a wood chipper. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like, like a chainsaw almost. Like, he, like so the Foley yeah. artist was. Oh my God. How, how do you create that sound? The we, longest, the, the longest short move. Yeah. movie of our yeah. life it's you're, three you're, hours long but it's only an hour and a half it's an hour and like 25 minutes but yeah. you're like is this over it's not even close it's not it, even a third it of the never way reaches there's so much happens the end. there's so much happens in every part of that movie that you think you've watched a movie three times it doesn't let up one bit <laughs> yeah you're 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 invested and then you're like 
oh, this has got to be getting over. And then nope. you're like, when is it going to be over? <laughs> I have been here for days. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Trent over, and we'll all just have a have a, a zombie ass night. Yeah, we have, we can have a we can have a movie marathon night. But um, zombie ass needs a cool down time though. When you we can't watch it too many times it. in a row because you you know if you remember too much about it. You need to be surprised. So we usually go about six months. Yeah. Like, six oh, months yeah. in between each in, oh, yeah, in between each viewing. So like but, Delta Green where you have to roll sanity after the fucking Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's pretty close. <laughs> um I, I actually we're coming up on our next rotation of the room. So I haven't, and I haven't seen it in a while. I got a signed copy of the room signed by Tommy Wiseau for my birthday. I remember you talking about this. Yeah. So I've never seen the room. Yeah, right, right. Well, you're yeah, yeah. Oh, you're missing out though. It's a, it's a good one. I'm gonna have to catch the next rotation of all these shitty movies. Yeah, yeah. we'll have a little marathon. It'll be good. You know, what my big thing has been lately has been watching uh, short, uh, short movies on uh, YouTube. Short horror movies on YouTube. Oh my god! Like I've been addicted to it. I've watched so many of them lately. I watched the worst one I've ever heard of. Worse than than the one I sent you. Yes. I wa- it is the worst movie I've ever seen. I felt disgusting. I felt like I had to go shower. I don't know if I should even talk about it. It was so bad. Was it like mm. on YouTube? Yeah. It was, was it on Alter? It was, no. It, are you, you going to need to shower now just talking about it? You want me to go over what this movie is about? You want me to do mine first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I can go over it. But I just watched it the other day and I, I'm still like, I'm not okay. So, so the last one that I watched... And I'll send the one that I sent to him to you because it is fucked up. My wife watched it and like made me, okay. So can I tell to you and then you can tell yours? Yeah, do it. So basically the plot of the first one that I sent him is it's a uh, like mortician that is taking care of a dead girl this whole time and like painting her up, but he's talking like she's alive and very affectionately to her. I think it was called the kiss, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's it. And this whole time, like he's really close to her face. Spoilers for anybody that is, wants to watch this type of stuff. This YouTube video. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But this whole time he's like really close to her face and you're like, and and she looks like she died, like maybe via drowning. Yeah. She looks rough. She had like dirt and twigs in her mouth and stuff. Uh, Yeah. And this whole time, like he's getting closer and closer to her face and you're like, don't fucking kiss her. Do not fucking kiss her. Mm. And then he kisses her. It's called kiss. Yeah. <laughs> and so you just feel gross. And then he puts her back in like the cold storage. And like he turns around and like, that's the best part. That That's it. Like that's- if you stopped watching it there, it's a great horror movie. Oh, right. I was like, that's the best part. No, yeah. that Like that's <laughs> what makes it a great horror right. movie. The part. Okay. But then there's a part after where she, her dead body comes out of the the cold storage and like runs and like devours his face. Oh, yeah. but as soon as you see her, yeah. As soon as you see her, it kills that horror. You're like, well, that's fake as fuck. Oh, yeah. right. But like just the, how uncomfortable it was watching her, him kiss her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First so, solid four minutes or whatever. I'll give you a movie recommendation. It's uh the autopsy of Jane Doe. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I watched on Netflix. I think it has Brian Cox mm-hmm. in it. Yeah. You um, can't say Cox on the show. What if it's a last name? Is it big and hairy? No, it's just his <laughs> last to name. Carry. <laughs> Actually, I, I yeah, I like Brian Cox as an yeah, actor that's though. Great. But um, yeah, like uh, like it, it's like a it's like a mystery, like a murder mystery kind of a thing. I love and, that shit, yeah. man. I've been meaning but to watch that. It, it has some supernatural elements, you know, and. It's it's actually a really good movie. I liked it a lot. You have to text me all the shit because I'll never remember it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I told I told you about Last Shift, right? That movie where like the it, it was really good, and then the director is remaking it himself because he's like, I got all these crazy ideas. That's the one that Jess was like, this would make a really crazy Delta Green scenario. Oh yeah, yeah right, right, right. Last Shift. Yeah, that was a, that's a good one. Mm. So the last horror short that I watched, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was I think it's called The Doll. Um. And so the premise is, is like, if you lose somebody close, you can take something of this person's to the doll maker and they'll make a doll. And it, it, I don't want to spoil it for you because I haven't sent it to you yet, but okay. that's the one that I'm, I'm going to have you, I'm going to, I'll send it to you both of you because yeah. it, it's, I'll check it out. It's pretty oh. crazy. So what's the, what's the deal with these? Can, uh, do you want another one? Can we grab another? I can just go grab it myself. Well, I'll, I'll get up. No, I'll, you're, I'll you're, you're good because we don't want to mess with your audio. Oh, we, we we have a 
a runner on oh. this show. Well, I, I was. Yeah. You just bring the box over. Yeah, you just want to bring it for the table. Yeah, there's no. Uh... I had no plans of getting drunk tonight, but hey, John's here. Yeah. Yeah, I we may have, have plenty uh, of beer. I may have helped myself to one of these earlier. So, did you drive here? Was that all that was? Uh, it was dropped off. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, I was like, that's why you're like, <laughs> give me another, <laughs> give me another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh yeah. You want to grab me something else? No, here you. You can have this one. I'll no. take. I'll take that one. Okay. Because I already had one of these, but yeah, I'll I'll trade you. So, I, the, I the beer trade. If nothing else, I am giving. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um. So, while we're in a um, uh, a short um, beer break, ooh, that summer show. perfect. Thank you. So, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, I was going to tell you that one that I watched, but uh, it's not in the same vein as anything. That's okay. So, all right, this is. W- am I going to want to watch it? No, not after <laughs> I tell you what it's about. This is something that nobody should watch. So, all right. So I have like, this problem. John has John has known about it. I have a problem. One of my problems is, is that when I hear about like a movie, like you should never watch this. You should never watch this. It's horrible. It's just horrible. It's the worst content you could ever imagine or whatever. Immediately click. I will think about that and I will have sometimes have nightmares until I watch it. And then I go, I don't, I don't okay. have that. And John goes, why do you do that? Why do you do that? I'm like, because I'll have nightmares about it i had nightmares about it uh so this one it just kind of popped up uh so there's this director his name's ari aster right and he made can't say ass on the podcast oh sorry beep um so he made hereditary right okay and um midsummer right those are two very famous like horror type movies a24 films right Mm -hmm. and so somebody was like hey this is this is ari aster's thesis for his for film school and he put it on YouTube. It's a 30-minute short film. And it is, like, one of the most disturbing things you'll ever see. So I was like, okay. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck me. This movie has messed me up since I watched it. It's about 30 minutes. Uh, stop watching now if you don't want to, like, be disturbed out of your mind. You've been warned. This is horribly horrible. So uh, the movie opens with a kid, like a teenager, right? And he's clearly... Uh, wanking it right and the dad comes in oh sorry sorry about that uh you know and he's like oh are you decent and he's sure comes in and he's just like you know hey son sorry you know i understand this is your private you know your privacy i didn't mean to invade your space uh i should knock next time whatever and you know then you know the dad leaves and you real and then you look and the kid is holding a photo that he was wanking it to and it's of his dad when he was younger. Look Aww. at the look on his face. Look at that look. Then the rest of the movie is the pattern of abuse of the son sexually abusing the father for the next 20 years until Jeez. it ends in a horrible, horrible like ending. It was... I felt so gross after, and I was like, I can't look away. Like I couldn't stop watching it. And it was like that. I don't know what that says about me, but that was awful. That was an awful movie I watched. And he turned that in for a grade. It was really good. It was well made. <laughs> it was well made. So he the lighting was made. nice. He did a good job, but it was awful. <laughs> can I just, can I just point out that I think hereditary was over like, what is that word? Overrated. 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 I liked it. Yeah. I I just I was like I watched it I was like man yeah, it was okay. I liked it I agree with John it was definitely overrated yeah on a, on a scale of one to ten I'd give it like a six it's so, fine so we've been talking a lot about movies John do you want to talk about yours right oh uh, I'll shamelessly plug something that I haven't even written a script yet for we're, it's, we're, it's in pre production that's what you it's, say that's it's in the pre production <laughs> that's the nah, business that's what it is yeah it's the business term well, pre production okay so we're we're making this movie and it's called uh, beaver slide and it's basically TM. it's trademarked they got trademarked. it already yeah yeah it's already trademarked and all that so uh it's a story of this you know uh, um basically a, a mudslide with beavers in it so but there's or uh but it's more than that <laughs> and i don't want to go into too many details yeah don't no spoilers no spoilers but uh these beavers are sex crazed and they, they you know 
Uh, and it has to do with, you know, it, uh, you know, environmental changes and things like that. But we have a trailer out there. We have a trailer we've been working on. I saw the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, last, well, when did I see it? Uh, it was just a few days ago. Yeah, just a little, while, a little while ago. Last mm-hmm. Friday, Thursday, last week sometime. And, and your wife put the trailer together. Yes. She did a really good job. I like the effect that she was using. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so. We 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 got together and we started talking. And we're like, we just need to make something so completely ridiculous that it doesn't matter. Like the like the script does it like like it it doesn't matter if it really makes sense. We're just trying to be, have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just we got our phones and we got we walked around in the woods. We're like, so the trailer is going to take place in the winter, but most likely the movie is going to take place in spring and summer because that's that's just when we were filming things. We'll, we'll have to film some while we're camping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it, where, where's the setting though? Isn't the setting like, is this, the settings here, right? We actually have a green screen. Um, right. But I mean like the setting of the movie. Yeah. It's wherever we want it to. No, he means like, well, isn't the town going to be called Beaverton? It's like called Beaver, Beaverton Falls oh, or yeah, something like that. Yeah. So in the mountains during Beaverton. the summer, there could be snow. Well, right. But we're like, yeah, it doesn't have it, it doesn't have to really make sense. It's just, you know, we just want to we just want to we we want to like do something. We, you know, we're you know, I like I was telling like, like I was telling you guys earlier, we had we had like a year and a half where everything fell apart. Mm-hmm. Like our like and we're putting our we're we're picking up our pieces and we're putting them back in place yeah. again. And part of that was like like understanding mental health and understanding um that that what we're experiencing it's okay and we're working through it Mm -hmm. and we're just now putting our pieces back together and we're like let's do something fun let's do something fun and it's going to take us we're going to get everybody together it's like it's like uh the the videos we filmed went from for my sister's birthday we filmed a bunch of random videos reenacting like memories from our childhood oh that's kind of sweet it was really funny yeah so i've never laughed at so hard yeah i did it that was and, uh, you know, we just want to do something like that and get everybody in on it, get all of our friends and family in it so we can rewatch it later and be like, wow, that was that was probably like, you know, this is really yeah. bad, but it's so great. I played Melanie in a wig. Yeah. yeah. So every time we had a memory of Melanie, I would just walk in with a wig and be like, oh, it's me, Melanie. Can you say, I love that woman. That's the voice I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's me, Melanie. Yeah. I uh, I played my my older sister Cindy, but I won't say anything just in case. <laughs> <laughs> in case she's watching. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna was. say do the voice you did, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I know we we've taken kind of a humorous approach for the full episode, but you t- you touched on something that I don't think a lot of guys, especially guys our age or in our era, really talk about is like caring for your mental health. It's something that's difficult to do. I know. I, as a guy, feel a lot of pressure to always be on on my game and be there supporting for my family. Like, and I, I'm I'm kind of putting you on the spot. And if you're not comfortable talking about it, I'll cut it out of the show and it won't even be here. Oh. Um, but how do you kind of handle, you know, significant exterior pressure and and dealing with your own mental health? How do you keep yourself in a good space? Because every time that we're together, you're laughing, joking. I know it occasionally that could be a facade, but that doesn't mean that it always is. So how do you, how do you kind of address your mental health? Well, we it was hard. It was hard. It was the first the hardest part is admitting that there was something wrong. Mm-hmm. And it, and there is a facade there. And it's 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 harder to it's harder to put up that facade than to just let it go and be myself. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, we grew up like you were saying we grew up in a, in a, in a time where it was like like you have to you have to be this this stereotypical macho man mm-hmm. right and and you have to be that and if you if you stray away from that in any way or shape or form that you know what does that do to to chip away at your own mental health mm-hmm. um so so ways that i ways that i kind of have learned to cope and i have learned to cope um in healthy ways mm-hmm. Um, is communication. Communication is 100% the most important thing. I tell my wife, I tell them, I tell Amanda how I feel all the time. I'm like, this is how I'm feeling. And I try to be honest with that. 
And that helps. Just getting that out there mm -hmm. helps a lot. Um, and not isolating yourself. That's another hard one because I isolated myself for a long time. Um, getting out there and realizing that, that even if you make mistakes, you can come back from that. You can, you can make a mistake and still be, um, you know, and, and, and you haven't failed. You just learn from that mistake and you move on mm -hmm. there. So it's, it's, it's weird, like, because John and I kind of go, we kind of go through, without even talking to each other, we will do something, and then we'll be like, oh, anyway, I start doing this, and then he, John will be like, oh, me too, weird, you know? Mm -hmm. We kind of, mm -hmm. like, uh, will sometimes hit that point, and, you know, when, in regards to mental health, it's the same. I, at one, I was talking to my doctor, and then he was like, oh, you know, and I was like, yeah, my, my brother... You know, I kind of got inspired by my brother and then also these things I'm going through or whatever. And he's like, oh, OK, yeah, that's great. You know, because, you know, the more you talk about it and stuff, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've I've learned to communicate to my wife better um, after like seeing a doctor about why why my brain, you know, cause, and a lot of guys like especially the, you know, the Terry's who don't work out, you know, like, mm -hmm. who don't work out their problems. They become the stepdad Terry's who beat their kids and whatnot. If you're sitting there like getting angry and you're leading with anger all the time um, and you're not dealing with it, that's that's your own bottle that you're is overflowing. You know, that's right. you going, you know, not admitting you have a problem. That's where like drink comes in. You know, you start drinking more. Um, you know, it can just lead to all these horrible problems. And like, you know, yeah. it's it's important to admit like, you know, this isn't normal. I shouldn't be getting this angry at little things, you know, and then the kids are, you know, you know what I mean? I, I think a lot, and John, thank you for being vulnerable and, and sharing that. Yeah. I, I really appreciate yeah, that. It's, I th it's no problem. It's, it's something that I think that, that some people, uh, er, I feel this way. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. I can't say anybody else does anything, but I feel like, like it's easier to internalize and it's easier to just keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. Um, but but to talk about it, so to talk about it, it's not only good for me. It's good for it's good for some. It, it might be good for somebody else who who maybe doesn't realize that. Hey, it's okay to feel this way. And and I think what we missed as kids, and and, and I agree with you hundred percent that we grew up in an era where you had to be a man, and and we're we're still kind of in that era. It, it's kind of shifting. But I think to be a good man, you have to balance that, right? Like, I don't, when I think about emotion and feeling, I don't just like completely say, fuck it, like mm -hmm. my dad would, right? And not shit talking my dad. My dad didn't do feelings. We did brief conversations that were five, 10 minutes, a lot of times filled with profanity, he would never sit me down and, and be like, you know, how did that make you feel? And, and I don't think asking somebody or, or openly communicating about the way that you feel makes you a pussy. Mm -hmm. um, I want, I want to teach my kids both sides. I want to teach my kids when it's time to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, and figure your shit out. Mm -hmm. But also when when it's time to sit down and be empathetic towards somebody else and and listen to what they have to say and i think a lot of our generation missed that as kids that we didn't have that empathetic ear to listen to us right it was, mm -hmm. it was you're a fucking boy figure it out yeah you can uh, see us our generations breaking cycles like that you know where yeah. Yeah. it's like you know, my dad's dad, my dad's dad, my dad's dad, dad, you know, mm -hmm. like they were all just, a lot of it is just cycles of abuse. You know, it's just cycles of getting your ass whooped. And it's like, I didn't learn anything other than I hate you. I hate <laughs> yeah. you for beating now me I, up, you now know. I, now I hate you. And guess who gets I'll never choose. do that again, but also I hate you and I never want to speak to you mm -hmm. at Christmas time. You know, it's, yeah. it's like those, when you break those patterns and like you see it, like I see it all the time and I won't mention any like. Mm -hmm. people but i see it all the time where i'm like oh that's why you're the way you are mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense because your parent or your grandparent is worse than you are 
to your next generation down. Like, you know, you always hear about people getting like beat as kids and it's like, Oh, that makes sense now Mm -hmm. to me. And, and I'll be, I'll be really vulnerable and I don't have a problem putting this out on the internet because I don't, because my dad and my parenting style are vastly different from each other. Um, and I, I never want to be in a spot where I'm not engaged in what my kids are doing. I don't want to over parent them or helicopter parent them. My wife will tell you that I will give them enough rope to fuck up and then Mm -hmm. I'll help them fix it or give them advice about how to fix it. Not going to fix it for you, but I'm going to, I want to be there that if you're in a shit situation, I'm going to be your first phone call, you know, like, if, if God forbid one of my kids and it's going to happen, goes out, hangs out with a bunch of their friends and is drunk in the middle of a field in, in mm-hmm. bum fuck Montana, that they're going to mm-hmm. call me and be like, dad, I'm drunk. I need a ride. Not hop in the car with some other kid that's drunk and get in a fucking wreck and, right. and die. Did you ever see that story about the dad who basically was like, you know, I, I want uh, to, they, he made like this deal with his kids and basically that same thing where it's like, if you're ever in a thing, if you ever need me for anything, um, just text me X, just the, just the letter X and, and where you are. And I will be there. And that means that there will be no questions asked. There will be no repercussions. I don't want to know what you are, just that I got you home safe. And I will never ask you about it again unless you tell me. I think that's really great. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to do that. I'm going to say... I'm going to tell my kids to do that because a, a lot of the, a lot of the fear of kids asking their parents for help is what's going to happen to me. Is it going to be worse than uh, my dad? And then, you know, you know, it's like, God, I wish they would have called me. I could have prevented this, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really important to like, to shut off your, I need to teach you a valuable lesson moment mm-hmm. versus like, you know, I know that if I, if I really lay into you, you're never going to speak to me again. Mm-hmm. I, I really like that. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to do that when they're older. Yeah. yeah it, I mean, and that's a tough balance too, right? Like we all have kids. Obviously that's why you're here today. And yeah. you really have to find that balance. And I, I think that's a really good point. Um, I, I, I think I might do something along the similar lines, but say like, we won't talk about this with your mother, but we'll have a conversation about it. Like, yeah. I, I was a teenager. I was out drinking in a field. I got into cars with people that I shouldn't have gotten into. <laughs> I did things that I shouldn't have done. Yeah. Um, I guess if it's like, I'm joining a cult and uh, they need to demand a blood sacrifice. Well, yeah, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me yeah, about tell that. Me that. Yeah. And uh, the, so the beautiful thing about the relationship I have with my stepson now is that he tells me everything. He He comes in. He tells me shit that he won't tell his mom. He'll just come in and we'll talk. And sometimes it's for hours about mm-hmm. girls, about school, about friends. And I, I have a really unique relationship with him where I don't tell him what to do. I just advise. And I and I I feel like that's almost our role as parents, just to advise. Like if I tell you what to do, I remember myself as a teenager, and my mom will attest to this, that I was just like, hmm. No, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. But if I say, this is what's going to happen if you do this. This is what's going to happen if you do this. Make your choice. I hope you make a good choice. In, yeah. in the moment, though, like there are some times where I have a really hard time controlling like, like what I say. Like when my kids come up and they say, hey, dad, I did this thing. My first reaction is like, why'd you do that? You, mm, Are you oh, fucking stupid? What the hell, man? <laughs> yeah. like, you know, and the, one of the hardest things is, yeah, to say, to repress that and say, okay, so when my kids come up and tell me stuff, I'm like, I, I, I tend to wait a few minutes mm-hmm. and they think I'm mad at them. I'm like, no, I'm processing. <laughs> I'm processing instead of reacting with the first thing that pops in my And that's head. hard to fucking do. Is yeah. to say, to say, hey, let's, Let's slow down a minute. Just let it go. Okay. And now let's let's talk about it. Um, and having a conversation with with my kids is it has been has been more beneficial than just saying yes, you know, and then uh, resorting to resorting to any anything that's negative. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And, you know, I like like Kevin said, I, I, I want my kids to not be afraid to tell me that they're in a harsh, in a bad situation. Because, yeah, we did it. We got in car. I've been in car wrecks before mm-hmm. because the dude, the dude, the dude who was driving had a pint of vodka and he was just slamming it down. And I'm, I was the one guy who was like, I think I'm going to put my seatbelt on. And then two seconds later, we hit a tree, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that's oh, how quick it can happen. I, I was, I was passed out in, in the back seat and, uh, when I woke up in my bed, somebody said, we got into an accident last night and I didn't remember it happening. Mm-hmm. I don't remember getting into my bed. Like it was that bad where I was just yeah. like, they were like, yeah, we, we went into the ditch. We started spinning and it was fucking nuts. We almost died. I was like, right. I need to reevaluate my life a little bit. So let me guys, let me ask you guys this, because this is something that I worry about frequently as a parent. So, my mom did a, a wonderful job trying to parent and and going through all my bullshit. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of lessons about life that I had to learn myself. And I had to go through some bullshit um, to get to that point. Without making our kids too soft, because I don't want to make my kid too soft. I don't want to be able to face the world. But do you think that there's like a healthy balance between uh, or a way for us to convey those messages to them and those lessons to them and them accept them without having to try and learn these lessons for themselves? I know that's a really vague question, and I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so for, you- for instance... Um, when I, when I was in my early twenties, I made a really poor choice and I got fucking hammered at a bar and drove home and went to bed. I didn't, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do anything like that. But when I woke up the next day, I didn't remember driving home. Right. And to that, in that moment, that was one of the scariest moments that I've ever woke up to was like that wasn't okay. Like I could have killed somebody. I could have killed myself. And that was just like a moment where like, well, I'm never fucking doing that again. Right. So how do, or if you guys have any pers- perspective, cause none of us are there with our kids yet, but how do mm-hmm. we teach those lessons, but avoid those moments? It's, I think it's hard to um, avoid the moments because they're going to happen no matter what you do. It's, it's kind of a balance between like, <clears throat> Hard, hard lessons, hard, learning the hard way, you know, like, fuck, my dad has told me for years I shouldn't do this. Mm-hmm. Now I've learned the hard way that I shouldn't have done it. Now I will never do it again. Um, when I was, and this is uh, just between us girls. Um, <laughs> I promise it won't go on the internet <laughs> or the <in a> TikTok. <laughs> when I was uh, 16, uh, John was there. Uh, he probably he might even know the story. <laughs> we were doing, uh, we were drinking screwdrivers all mm. night long. We ran out of orange juice, and our, I had a I had a work friend there because I worked at a place, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, hey, do you want to come with me? We'll go down to the we'll go down and get some orange juice for our screwdrivers." I said, "Can I drive?" <laughs> okay. And uh, that was probably like the third time I'd ever driven at all. And, uh, yeah, so I reversed out of there all fast, ran right into a street sign, knocked the street sign over, and then I immediately was like, oh, my God, never doing that again. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, it was Mm -hmm. like I had a hard lesson. The guy shouldn't have let me. uh, My youngest daughter is calling me. (laughs) Uh, She calls everybody eight times a day. Evie, Um, don't drink and drive. Yeah, don't drink and drive. (laughs) And then she bitches me out when I get home. She's like, you didn't answer my call. Uh, But I, so, so I learned that lesson really early. I've never like been not okay to drive and been like, wow, I should have driven last night. Never. I will always be the one that's like, I need a ride. I need a ride. I'm I'm staying here or whatever. Because I remember that happening and being so frightened that I was going to get in trouble or that I could have like backed into the neighbor's house and killed his wife or whatever, you know, like Mm -hmm. I just remember that. And at some point I heard about it like a year later um, where they were like, Hey, this guy's car, knocked over a sign and now the sign's missing 
buddy of mine stole the sign. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he put it up in his room. Uh, but the cops were asking him, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And nothing ever came of it. But like, I just remember being like really, really like nervous after that and being scared that I was like, man, I really fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like, so when you have a when you have a child and you're trying to teach them stuff, I knew that drinking and driving was bad. I'd seen mm-hmm. the car accidents and the fucking dead bodies. You know, I'd seen that. You know, the scare. The so you can see stuff. thestrals. What you can see thestrals. What do you mean? It's fine. Move on. Anyway, so so I I'd seen all those and I knew about it and everybody you know drunk driving and whatnot. Uh, you'll have to explain to me what you're talking about. Thestrals. Only people that have seen death can see Thestrals in Harry Potter. Oh, oh, right. Okay. I'm not that into Harry Potter. I had no idea what you're talking about. We're, we've both been playing Hogwarts Legacy. And oh. so it's like the opening season, scene of the game. And I was like, okay. I forgot that word. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I, I honestly think it's a cross between um, I know not to do it. I know not to put my hand on the stove. I know I'm going to get burned, but I need to get burned at least once to like understand it or get close to being burned to understand truly physically in my brain, body, and soul. That is a bad idea. I mm-hmm. will get burned. Um, so it's a cross. It's a, it's a mix. And if you're smart enough and you're, you convey the message enough to your kid, um, hopefully they will never need to learn the hard way and they'll just be like, never done it. Never want to. No problem. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that the best we can do is um, give them the give them the knowledge, and then hope they make the right decisions. Right. Because in the end, they're just little people. Mm-hmm. Well, they are people, not just little people. I, I'm used to calling my kids little people because they're all I you know. I have to you, they are little people. Four to fifteen, so I have five. So, um, but just giving them the knowledge and say, and and not being afraid to be like, hey, let me tell you a story, and then tell them you know, what happened to you because this, this is unpleasant. And, you know, in the end, if they make the wrong decision, you have to be there. You also have to be there as well to, to give them like that firm, like you, you, you messed up bad, Mm -hmm. but I'm also going to be here for you. You know, just because I'm not happy with you doesn't mean I don't love you. Exactly. I'm not happy with you. I still love you. But I'm really mad at you. And I tell I tell my kids that. Not I was gonna say frequently, but not frequently. Like I I, I don't always like you. That doesn't mean that I don't always love you. Right. Sometimes I don't like the decisions you make or the choices that you make. I'm always gonna love you no matter what. But right. fuck, I don't like my wife some days. She, and I know there's days she doesn't like me, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean I'm not always gonna love her. Well, you know, as as a husband and a father. It's my job to make my life, my wife's life, just either more interesting or more miserable. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I always have, I have a difficult balance there. Depends on uh, the week. Depends on the week. <laughs> so, but um, no, yeah, communication. The the hardest thing is to communicate, especially communicating your feelings. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you say? How, how do you say? Hey, I'm having a bad day without somebody being like, yeah, you pussy. You know, yeah. and we and we've been conditioned our whole life. Well, at least I have it to not talk about that. Mm-hmm. Like how, yeah. what is the standard answer when you ask a guy how his day's doing, uh, or how how you doing? Fine, fine, fine. Fucking standard across the board. It doesn't matter if <laughs> if his mom just died and he fucking's going bankrupt. How you doing? Fine, fine. And we we've been conditioned for so long not to talk about it. And I don't, and I really don't think talking about it is any sign of weakness. I, I've seen magnificent growth in in just my relationship with my kids and my wife. The more willing I am to talk about shit, even mm-hmm. if it's uncomfortable shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. The more open you are, and then and then you know, like there there's things that like I opened up, like I would open up to my wife about, and she's like, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. how I've been feeling. Like, you know but I never wanted to tell you. And it's been like eight years, you know, <laughs> 10 years. I've, I've been with her for 10 years. Did she get pissed at you? Cause you waited that long. Cause I get that. Like, why'd you wait that long to tell me? She, she's just <laughs> like, Oh, you're, you're just kind of like telling me all these things. And I didn't know them. I didn't realize them. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's probably why blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's the fact that it, you know, you should, if you're ever going to, because like a lot of the older generations too, they would get, they, they would have this weird, and you still see it now. I see it for all the older kind of people in their 50s and 60s and 70s even, where they have this weird no communication 
like no it's it's this weird transactional we sleep in separate bedrooms i have a his and her sink i we don't talk i make you breakfast you bring home money and uh, you know like there's no love there's no like sustenance there's no relationship like yeah. it's oh. it's weird <clears throat> Yeah, it, it is a relationship, but it's like I couldn't imagine it's different. being like that. It's, yeah. yeah, it's way different. Than I, could, what we I couldn't, I couldn't so. imagine being like that with my wife. I'm like, I tell my wife everything. Yeah, it's, it's hard to it's hard to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Like, mm-hmm. you know how how is how is so and so feeling? The the my own worst, my own. The, you know who you you know who the person who talks the most shit about me is? Me in mm-hmm. my own head. Like I like all all you guys have been talking shit about me all day. In fact. One of you guys was going to throw a bucket of pig's blood on me as soon as I walked in the door and then just reenact the scene from Carrie. That's mm-hmm. that's that's where my mind went. But you'd leave the bucket outside because it's cold and it would be frozen and then you'd just drop a brick on my head. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, Did you like, think we were going to do that to you? I think that's I think that's how every social situation is going to go. Like I went over to somebody. I, I went over the other day and we're, me and Amanda were talking. I was like, yep, they're going to have the pig's blood. As soon as we walk in, it's been cold outside, so it's frozen. Throw it at him anyway, you know. Baby scrap the pig's blood. Yeah, Go ahead and yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. next time John walks in the door for the show, we're gonna be like, ha 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 ha! ha look yeah, at him! Yeah, look at yeah. that freak! Yeah, Let's just mess with him, you know. And that's just that's just where my mind goes, and that's just that's just insecurities. Mm-hmm. Insecurities are like like you get the insecurities in your brain from like I get them really bad from like middle school. I'll be sitting there and be like, that was fucking stupid. And it'll be from something that happened 20 years ago or mm-hmm. like 15 years ago. Uh, and I'll be, I'll, I'll be like relive the embarrassment of like whatever, or whatever it was. I, I don't get that so bad. I, I'll tell you what I get really insecure about. I really get insecure, insecure about the quality of work I produce. Like, so specifically mm-hmm. talking about our podcast and, and you and I are in the middle of writing a movie as well and, and projects that I'm involved in. And I always, I mean, I'm an asshole to work with. You can, you can attest that. And I don't think so. Maybe not an asshole, but a perfectionist. Yeah. And you also call yourself a perfectionist a lot, but I'm like, are you, are, I don't think you're that bad. You're, you're not that anal or micromanagey about anything Baby. that you want. We, Hon- honestly, yes. I've had bosses. Yes, pumpkin. I've oh, had bosses that are hard. worse. Where they're like, "Why are you hovering over me? Oh my god, let me do my thing." Um, mm. Not like you're a manager, but like you know what I mean. No, yeah, baby. Mm. It depends on the day <laughs> and your mood. I get it. I'm, yeah, I, you know, but you just want something to be good. I I do, and and so, like for instance, since this is coming out on. The 16th, so which is tomorrow for us. Mm. And the season finale for Doom Vision is coming out the day after. Mm-hmm. And we watched it last week. Mm-hmm. And ever ever since then, like I'm nitpicking everything about it. And so I'm I'm oh I'm really insecure about my work. Like I know when something is good or or at least like passable, but I'll I'll be done with it and then I'll like look at it 15 more times. So I I've learn to just be like i need to set a time limit this is what i've produced and it's out the door and 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 just be done with it otherwise i'll fucking sit and like tinker with it forever Mm -hmm. but i'm really insecure about what i produce and wanting it to to reach a certain standard Mm -hmm. um and, and some of that is is hindered by equipment we have like we produce a fucking amazing show. Like considering this is the third episode, congrats, your third guest. This is the third episode of this particular podcast. I think we produce fucking phenomenal content for where we're at and what we have the ability to do. But I still judge harshly what I produce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people, like every buddy, everybody does. You know, everybody is always like, like talk to like anybody who's ever written anything you know <laughs> they're their own worst critic um you know i'm 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 going over cuz i'm writing the the next uh mm-hmm. the next bit for doom vision and i'm like going over it like 50 times at one point i was writing and i was on like page 8 and i went holy fuck this is uh what did i write i, I wrote 
holy fuck, this is all over the place. And then I just closed my laptop in anger. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was just like, there's too many fucking threads. Mm -hmm. Like, you just get so, like, frustrated and angry. And then, like, that's how you get, like, beautiful, good things. Um, but then that's also how you, like, yeah, and that's how you weed out, like, the shit that you're like, well, you know, I can, you know, come back to it with fresh eyes, cut it and paste it, and then get it out, get out the bad stuff and bring in more good. And mm -hmm. just the the how the human mind, mind works. Yeah. It's, it's a process. Yeah, and and John, you're really creative too, um, and and produce a lot of a lot of projects. You work on a lot yeah. of projects. Oh well, yeah. Do you, do you kind of feel this sim uh, similarly? I would like to say that I have this thing where I can hyper focus on something, but that's only every once in a while. I'm I have this like I I have I I have like an ADHD brain, where I have I have examples of every little project that I've I've come up with over the years, like. Um, laying around my house. So I have beading supplies. I have cross-stitching supplies. I have painting supplies. I have, I had a subscription to a writing thing, uh, you know, and I would love to say that I could, I could take one of those and just work on it. But I have many different things it's like when i do it's like okay i've done this i'm gonna go do something else i've done that i'm gonna go do something else you know it's hard for me to focus mm -hmm. um uh focus on one thing well beethoven liked music and like he was really good at it right what we have a problem with is that we all like too many things at once and we want to mm -hmm. do everything we were literally just talking about this. Yeah, it's like, like we want to do everything. And then that being said, I want to bring in another project idea <laughs> that I think you guys are going to love. But I, it's bad. The I thing can't is, is we're myself. all into it, though, because we're all, like, creative dudes. So, uh, I mean, we, we've we been talking about this movie, and if, if we started writing a new movie, I'm like, oh, my God, John, I have this idea. I want you to come do this with me. I know John, because I he's like a brother, You'd be like, "Fuck yeah, let's do it." Let's do it. Yeah, let, let's figure yeah. it out. How are we gonna do it? Yeah, um, and that, you know, it's that creative collaboration. We mm -hmm. should do that more often. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think that I think that we know enough creative people. The problem is just getting outside, of, getting outside of my like, it, for me, getting outside of my own head mm -hmm. and saying, "Okay, I'm gonna go take a chance," and because you know, last couple of years. We've we've all been taught to, you know, let's bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> yeah. Don't mm. wear. Uh, you didn't wear your mask either, and mm. I'm a little upset. Yeah, I left my <laughs> I, I, I left my ape mask at home. It's like the full facial ape mask. I left that at home. Sorry guys. So yeah, but I I, I, I agree. I, so. I I would like to be at the point where we our our family and and so far. I don't know if you know this, but I'm I'm part of the Peterson clan. Right. Did oh. you hear? Did you hear this? It's is is it official now? It, I talked to your mom. Oh yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Okay, there yeah. it is. She yeah. says you're like a son to me. There it is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm officially your brother. Yeah. I, I know we've been friends for a long time, but officially right. your brother. Right. No. Yeah. Um. Welcome to the family. <laughs> no. Cheers. No. <laughs> uh, but our group collectively is so is, is very creative. Our I don't know if artistic is the right word. Melanie is artistic, but yeah. And, and Amanda is artistic and we, I want to get to the point where we're all creating all the time and not having to work nine to or eight to fives or nine to fives or whatever. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, it's, it's hard when, when all of my, my mental power, I, I, I say goes to my, goes to my eight to five or mm -hmm. my yeah. nine to five or eight. Yeah. It's eight to five. Um, and then by the time I get off work, I'm like, all right, let's think I'm about, fried. let's think about dinner and that's going to be food, you know? Um, and then, and, and then like, let's clean up the house, let's do laundry. And it's like, it's like that shift from work brain to home brain. And I work from home. Mm -hmm. So it goes from coming out of my bedroom, which is my office and closing the door. I don't see my pants. I gotta go. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, and closing my door and then coming out and being like, Hey guys, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, you know, clean up the house. Let's, let's, uh, let's make dinner. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's where my, that's where, where my, my problem comes in. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I try to work around that. 
and and I understand that because part of the problem with being creative is you have to be in the my, the right mind space to be creative, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of times, a lot of frustration that I have, especially like during parenting, is I, I want to be there with my kids every step of the way. I want to be at all their activities. I want to, you know, I want to tuck them in, read them stories every night. But that leaves me 30 to 45 minutes at best a night to get into a creative space to do something and then go to bed and mm-hmm. start the whole cycle over again. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's super difficult. Yeah. Like my last hour of the day is when I get to choose. That's my time. Mm-hmm. That's me time. And that's from 11 or 10 to 11 ish. Um, oh man, you stay up later than I do. I'm yeah. usually in bed by nine. <laughs> yeah. That's why, that's why I'm tired all day is because, yeah. because my, you know, I start, you know, our day starts at, 6.45, 6.30, and it goes until 9 or 10 at night. And we're all, and that's, we're constantly just, you know, okay, we're doing bedtimes, we're doing teeth brushing, we're doing homework, we're doing, you know, we're doing these things. And, um, you know, how do you make that meaningful to everybody involved? And so at the end of the day, yeah, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, smoke a bowl, uh, play Cult of the Lamb lately. That's where I'm into <laughs> So, um, and then just relax, just, and, and, and just take my mind off of everything. And then that's, that's where I focus. Well, and and that's the other like part of the deal too, right? Like you, not only do you have to balance that creative bucket in your mind, but then that recreation bucket, because Mm -hmm. like I love video games and and want to play video games and and balancing that with work and being a dad and being a husband, which is a whole different category than being a dad, right? Right. Like my wife needs separate attention than my kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and being there for everybody involved, you know, and that's, that's where a lot of that stress is. Stress comes in too. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's like, how can I, how, how can I justify my free time, if I haven't done A, B, C, D. Right. If I haven't done, you know, these other things. Mm-hmm. So that's, and, and, and I think that's one of the, I think that's a very difficult thing. That's, that's that work, that balance, finding that balance. And you, you talked about that earlier, finding mm-hmm. that balance, you know, finding, you know, where, where does, where does this work out? So, yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but. Something we all got to practice. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it's not going to be perfect any way you slice it, but yeah, finding that time for the wife and and kids and and being creative and and working and um, Kevin and Kevin takes up so much of my. I text Kevin more than I text my wife. No, yeah, <laughs> <Ew>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's no joke. Don't look at my DMs. I, <laughs> Yeah, I just send Kevin random videos and songs throughout the day. I'm like, hey, check this out. I, w- I found this song. It's a good song. Kevin will tell you that I usually text him with tasks, so it's mm. not as fun. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> He'll be like, hey, uh, could you do that thing for me? Yeah. Is it's, that it's, thing I sent you? So oh, it's, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. So technically, tomorrow's uh, St. Patrick's Day. Or no, is that? day after. Day after tomorrow. Day oh, after. no, no. At, when this airs, tomorrow will be St. Oh, yeah, Patrick's yeah, yeah, Day. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, St. Patrick's Day. So. We'll say happy happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, St. Patrick's Day. happy St. Patrick's yeah. Day. I do. I did have something to tell you guys though. Oh, all right, we got. It. So the other day, uh, I was on my phone, and I said, "Hey Shirley," instead of Siri. It just came out. Now my phone is stuck in airplane mode. My phone's been stuck in airplane mode as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to get Kevin to, with this one earlier. I said, "Hey Kevin, what do you call a, a a group of birds that stick together? A flock. Velcros. <laughs> Velcros. That's a good one. That's a good one. Did oh. you? Oh, I was gonna mention this. Did you guys hear about that kidnapping at the school? Oh shit, no. Yeah, like fucking my kid's school. Did you see that? No. There was a kidnapping. You didn't hear about that? Did they wake at him up? At our kid's school, there was yeah. a kidnapping. Yeah. No, I did not hear about this. That's all right. They woke him up. Yeah. <laughs> nice <one>. You had me. <laughs> you had me hook, line, and sinker. 
I was John, like, John what? Got it right away. Uh, sorry, sorry. I was like, wait a minute. Did they wake him up? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, you had me hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Do you know why? Do you know why the Pope always is cold at night? Mm-hmm. His sheets are holy. <laughs> <laughs> You even made the peanut gallery laugh. Well done. Did the kidnapping have you? No, it was just me. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. I'm scrapping that from the episode. I'm cutting it. Troy, cut it. Don't you dare. Don't you oh. dare. I got Troy. Uh, one of my favorites, though, is what kind of dog can do magic? Let me think about this. I know this one, actually. Yeah. It's in my list. Yeah. I, know. I don't know. It's a Labracadabrador. Oh, my God. That's good. <laughs> I have it in my list right here. Fuck. Yeah. I was going to say it at one point. So that that ru- Damn it. I don't want to give away my goodness I, uh, for other episodes. Yeah. Oh, don't. Say I, woke up, All right. I woke up randomly in the middle of the night with a dad joke in my head. And it says, um, why should you never listen to um, Eye of the Tiger while you're exercising? Why is that? Because you could fall and skin your knee. Uh, I remember this one time I heard a, a joke. Um, all right, I, I saw it was like jokes.com's oh, wait. best joke of all Sorry, time. Sorry, I have to interrupt. Oh. Eye of the Tiger was by Survivor. It was. Not Journey. I was thinking, what was that? What, what's that Journey song? Anyway, I have over explained it and now I will. Uh... <laughs> you got to workshop it, John. That's the best dad, kind of dad did, joke. Did you hear about the workshop? So this is going to be a re joke for all of our listeners. But I, I was workshopping one for a while, and it didn't, it didn't go over well. But I'm going to share it with you anyway. Okay. If I remember it. Tell your joke. Let me think about it. Okay. Not, let me, all right. This is like, I, I remember it was like jokes.com's best joke of all time. Highly, highest rated and funniest or whatever. And the joke is, um, like, so two hunters are out. I'm going to fucking butcher it. But two hunters are out hunting, right? Probably have all have heard this at some point. And... Uh, one leaves to go to the bathroom. He comes back and his hunting buddy's on the ground. And he's like, oh, fuck. So he pulls out his phone. He calls 911. He says, hey, um, uh, I think my, my friend's dead. Uh, we're out hunting right now. And she goes, okay, can you make sure that he's actually dead? And then the 911 operator hears, bang! And he goes, okay, now what? <laughs> 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 All right, I, I remember it. All right, go ahead. Uh, so... <clears throat> My wife was really excited to go have warm apple juice with the writer of A Christmas Carol. I wasn't quite sure how I felt about her having a dick in cider. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Okay. It's not bad. You ever see those Still dad- don't like it. <clears throat> you ever see those videos of like the like you tell jokes across the table uh-huh. and then the first person to laugh loses. Right. We're gonna we, do that. we talked oh, about doing a right? rapid fire of dad jokes. I would forth. I would lose that every every time because like my kids tell me they know when a dad joke's coming because I go up and I go, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. And they're like they're like, you're bad at telling jokes, so you would lose that immediately. Do you ever get those guys that go, ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, those videos of those guys telling dad jokes, and then they, yeah. 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 Ah, ah, <laughs> They'll hit ah, a chair into the, they hit a chair into the lake yeah. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Um, I can honestly say being a dad is probably the best thing, the best thing I've ever done. And I've done a lot of dumb shit. So, uh, but no, being a dad is the best thing. I, I, I love my kids. I have conversations with my kids. I have conversations with my kids that like, I wish I had. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mom did great. My mom did, you know, I, and of course, you know, um, but there were just certain things that, you know, you just, you had to learn on your own. Yeah. Well, yeah. You don't learn how to be yeah. a dad till you become one. Yeah. So. Oh, well, hey, I can honestly say that I learned a lot of, uh, what it means to be a dad from you. So oh. you had children before me, and I got to watch you raise some kids, and I learned things. Uh, first thing, uh, uh, here's an example. First thing I did when 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 I got to the hospital after that, uh, after we had our first child, was, uh, "Who's your doctor?" And I go, "One second, John. Who's your doctor? Uh, it's so and so." Yeah. <laughs> Just learn from learn by experience from good other good mm-hmm. dads, and so if we can put that out into the world that, uh, hey, here at the Drop Dad Podcast. Be a good dad and show other good dads what it means to be a good dad. Absolutely. 
Well, John, thank you so much for being a guest. I I, I know we kind of joked around about getting you on the show and, and when we were going to get you, we're, but we're happy to have you here. And, and, and thanks for sharing some of your wisdom. And Ooh, Well, and, you know, I try. Um, you know, I, 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 I work a lot from home and I spend a lot of time by myself and I probably worked this up to be worse than it was going to be. Yeah, so, we didn't. It was good. <laughs> yeah, no, was we great. scrapped yeah, the pig's blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys forgot the pig's blood. I guess I'll get that next time. Well, we love you. And one half of it is your brother. One half of it is your other brother now that you didn't know you had because I'm part of the Peterson right. clan. Right, right. So. We're an ever expanding clan. We're thinking about starting a cult. So. <laughs> I think you're like three members away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, need, we need a ranch yeah. 15 miles hey, out of town. Hey, uh, let, I, I don't know what paperwork we need to go for tax exempt status, but let's get that in the works. Too. We're starting a church. Just With a full well. religion. Yeah. Yeah. Whole thing. No. All right. All right, but no, it's been it's been great. You know, you you know, I always like talking to you guys. Well, we'll have to have you back on. Oh, we will definitely have you back right. on. We got more to talk about because we probably could go for another three hours just sitting here yeah, bullshitting. No oh yeah, we just scratched the it's surface. Too easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we didn't even play a game. We we had a game planned. Yeah, we didn't yeah, make we it to the game. It's, it's, I know. Yeah. Uh, well, you want me to close it out, or you're gonna close it out? Well, hey, I started the show. I'll close it out. Hey, goodbye. Have yourself a wonderful. St. Patrick's Day, and remember to be a good dad, even if it means being a good person. I'm surprised you're not going to plug the thousand likes for the camping trip. Oh yeah, thousand likes, people! <laughs> you like likes. this? You like this video a thousand times, and I can get Troy to go camping. And follow all the socials that are around us right now. You guys oh, see I those? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> get out of here! Get out of here! Get, get. See you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. It was fun.